Looking from your telescope, take me on this journey home. I don't wanna wait no more. Lay me down behind the moon, tell me you'll be on real soon. I don't wanna wait no more. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the podcast. Because we don't have a title for this podcast. But hello, um, I'm Tiffany. And I'm Amisha. And today, we're going to be talking about something that's not related to Rutgers. Wow. Or school. <laughs> so, our question of the day is, do you believe in paranormal activity or magic? AKA ghosts and like Harry Potter. So, I don't believe in magic but i can say paranormal activity is a definite yes um how Interesting. About you? that's kind of funny i don't think i truly believe in ghosts and stuff like that and i don't think i truly believe in magic either but you know there's always like that little part of me is like i wish i was a fairy i wish i wish that a fairy would come to me and tell me oh you have a destiny to be the fairy princess so you know you know what i mean like there's just a little part of me that always it really wants that to be real, but then there's the other part of me that's like, oh, taxes. Those are real. <laughs> taxes? Yeah. You know you know what I'm talking about? Like, no, okay, I agree. I think magic-wise, I know it's not real. Like, 100%. I'm sorry, any Harry Potter. <clears throat> I don't know whether fantasy books are out there. I'm sorry. Magic is not real. I'm sorry. My Little Pony? That's, no. Friendship is yourself. not magic. My Little Pony? <laughs> I don't think we're talking about the same kind of magic, but okay. <laughs> no, but I don't think it's magic is real, but it'd be nice if it was, right? So here's my logic, kind of. Um, so you know how I really love to read? Mm-hmm. And I, like, I've been reading, like, fantasy books and stuff ever since I was, like, really little. Like, you know, Magic Tree House and, like, the something fairies. Oh, my God, I forget. Why do I think Wait, I, I have to look that. this up. Hold on. Yeah, it was, like something like fairy magic books the big book of fairy rainbow books, not, oh, no no sorry. no rainbow magic rainbow magic okay rainbow, so okay never mind i've never read this before you never read the rainbow magic books i've also never read magic treehouse tiffany i, think I was really bad i think at i reading. have to quit this podcast <laughs> no 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 i I'm I'm really... never read magic treehouse I'm pretty sure when I was little, I was really, really bad at reading. So I was never in the upper levels. And so I could never read those books. But that's not upper books. levels. In first I grade? I used to read these. What are you talking about? This wasn't first grade. I read these up until like fifth grade, probably. <laughs> not, I like, like, not to expose myself or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I was at that level. So I never was able to read them. Because they were just never offered to me. Because, you know, like, in class, they have the section where they have the books, right? And there's different levels, A, B, C, whatever. Mm-hmm. I never I never was in the higher levels. No, but I read these in, like, third, fourth grade, you know? These I'm were sorry, like, they were you're distant. privileged. I never got to read them. Look, sorry. we went to the same school district. We didn't Your go to the same school, them. though. Yeah, but your library had those books. I can bet you $50,000. Actually, I can't. I don't have the money. But I can bet you $5 that your school had them. Okay, but disregarding okay, disregarding the whole Magic Treehouse fairy, Miss Rainbow Fairy magic thing. Stop um, talking. Oh, wait. I don't want to listen to you anymore. What really kind of magic like are you magic talking treehouse? about? I'm just talking about magic. Like... <laughs> Like magic, like any type of magic. Yeah. Okay, wait, wait, sorry. I like kind of got off track before, but what I was trying to say at first was like, you know, I grew up like reading fantasy books a lot. So, and obviously when you're little, you're more likely to believe that those kind of things exist. But I was never like really the kind of kid who believed that like Santa was real or like unicorns were real or something, Mm -hmm. but just like magic, you know, the idea of magic, like it's just like a little part of me. It's always been like, it has to be real. I feel like, yeah, just, like, just I, magic I wish it was general. real. Hmm? Like, just magic. It's, like, whatever form it takes. I don't know. There's always been that part of it. It's, like, there's got to be something out there, you know? And That's like I just aliens, haven't found my though, destiny right? yet. Do you yeah, but aliens, aliens, like, you can, there's, like, a science thing. 
and mm, magic's actually, not I think there science. has to be no that's the whole point of magic okay there's probably a science to magic but we don't know because we don't know if it's real you know uh-huh you know what I mean? do i know what you mean probably not <laughs> I feel like even I'm confusing myself right now. <laughs> okay. okay, wait. Let me start over. Okay. Okay. So magic, yeah. Paranormal activity, not really. But aliens, yes. Okay, so I have a question for you. Um, okay, magic, disregard magic. Aliens, disregard aliens. Let's talk about ghosts. Paranormal activity. Why don't you believe in ghosts? Is it because you haven't experienced it? Or, okay, I personally have never had those experiences that people seem to have a lot, like if they saw something or something. Like. But also, kind of like those that kind of stuff, I would also group under magic. You know, like the big umbrella. Basically, I guess magic in my head is like something that's not explained by our current mm-hmm. rules. But like specifically ghosts and stuff like that, I've never had any experience but like movies and like those kind of shows do creep me out though Mm -hmm. i think okay this is my opinion on ghosts right in terms of movies Mm -hmm. i think they tend to um exaggerate it a lot because obviously it's for that that thrill factor to like scare people right and then in my opinion um ghosts could be real so i'm like leaning more on the spectrum of they're probably real Mm -hmm. because I mean this is also another thing where like uh like you don't believe it until you experienced it and I feel like when I was little I I believed in it so much I thought there were like spirits and ghosts following me all the time oh my god (laughs) yeah I never had that really I don't think I ever I wonder why because it's like a pretty that's a pretty um probable I don't know the word but, you know, that makes sense. But I don't know why I personally never mm-hmm. like, thought I experienced that. I think also, well, in my case, I believed in it more because, like, my father tended to really push that onto, onto like, me and my sister where he's like, yeah, they're real. Like, yeah. like they're haunting you. Like, <laughs> I don't have toenails because these ghosts ate my toenails. And I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> like like things like that really creeped me out and then I was like they're real then and then when I would walk in my house I'd be like I saw one or like I heard them that actually makes sense because it was kind of the opposite for me because when I was little like if I'd be scared of something I probably believed in them when I was little but like um like you said your dad would like kind of feed into that mm-hmm. but it was the opposite for me because my parents never did that like every time I would be like, "Oh, mom, there's a ghost," she'd be like, "Tell him to get lost" or something. You know, like she would like brush it off because, <laughs> yeah. So like they would always have like some sort of like, sarcastic reply or like something silly to say about it. So yeah. I never really believed it that much. So that kind of makes sense. So you've also mm-hmm. never like had a ghost experience or a ghost encounter? No, because I think if there was ever anything like weird that happened or like. I don't know, like anything, you know, creepy or something. If I would like tell my mom and she would always have an explanation. So, yeah. Okay, so explain this. There is this one time, I guess this was in high school at night, and my sister was in the living room watching TV. And then I was in the kitchen, probably eating, gouging myself, because that's what I usually do at 12 a.m. <laughs> at night. So I'm sitting there in the kitchen. She's in the living room. And I hear like barefoot footsteps in the hallway, if you can call it a hallway. And I was like, did you hear that to my sister? And she said, I didn't hear anything. And this is so creepy because there was no one else on the first floor. So it's just us two and I heard footsteps. And your parents were like upstairs? Yeah, they're sleeping. That's creepy. But that's also, like, maybe I was hallucinating. Maybe I was, like, reading too many creepy pastas, and that's why I heard these <laughs> footsteps. So I don't know, right? Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I guess that's the whole thing. Like, you just don't know. I'm sure that, like, most people have had some sort of experience. Like, I'm sure that even I've had some, like, 
experience like that. Mm -hmm. But I think it just depends on partially what you want to believe, not the, um, or like, okay, so if somebody who is like a really firm non believer, like, Mm -hmm they would always want to find an excuse like some sort of explanation right yeah which is like kind of like my situation like if there's anything like that that would happen to me I would always have some sort of explanation in my head or like try Mm -hmm. to find something and then I would be like satisfied with that but then for you who is more of a believer and like you know other people if they encounter something like that they would always like have a different like an explanation that's on like a different side you know Mm -hmm. so I guess it also depends on the person it definitely depends on the person I think I'm probably more susceptible to believing those types of things (laughs) yeah and like yeah and I don't think that there's anything like necessarily negative or positive about it because it would be the same thing for me just on the like other end of the spectrum Mm -hmm. like I would try to find every excuse to find like a logical you know in conclusion logical explanation Mm -hmm. But also, I know there's like a thing where, you know, when they say like animals and young kids mm-hmm. can see spirits or ghosts, like they can see it better than older people can. Yeah. So I'm wondering if like, this is my thinking, right? When I was so young, mm-hmm. I was able to see them. But now that I'm older, I no longer see them. And it's no longer something that I can see. But that's also like, like, what if that was just my childlike imagination? imagining all of these things you know I guess it's kind of interesting I mean yeah I've heard of that thing like the little kids and because uh, they're more likely to or what is it called like they're they can see it better mm-hmm. right and that kind of does make sense but I feel like you know how I said like okay I kind of like believe in magic or at least I really want to <laughs> but in my, in my personal experience I don't think that me getting older has affected that mm-hmm But not that, I guess it's kind of different though, because I haven't actually had any experience where I've seen paranormal activity or like magic or anything. But have you like gone into a house and you just get like this weird, creepy vibe and you're thinking something's just not right about this house, even though it looks perfectly fine. The people living there are perfectly fine, but it's just like the feeling, the environment you get. No, see, like I've never had that. Oh, I've never had that in real life, but I've had that in dreams. Mm. Actually, that was a crazy dream. Wait, can I say it? Yeah. Okay, this was only like the, this was near the end part of the dream because like the beginning part was like really wild. But anyway, so the end part, like I drive to this person's house and I think that it was like my neighbors or something or like my uncle and aunt, I don't know, something like that. And then I was like getting really weird vibes still in my dream. And like they had like a daughter or something. Like, this was, it was, like, a couple, they had a daughter, and, like, I was, like, oh, where's the daughter? And the dad goes, like, oh, she's just, I don't know, he, like, said something, like, she was busy or something. Mm -hmm. And the mom, like, was, like, oh, yeah, um, and then I was, like, oh, I'm looking for the bathroom, so I go to the bathroom, or, like, I try looking for the bathroom, but I actually go to a different room. It turns out that the daughter was dead. The father murdered the daughter. I don't know who this was in my dream, but, like... Wait, was, like, how is this related family. to, like, what, what's happening right now? No, no, no. I'm <laughs> <laughs> it's because, you know, when you said you go into the house and you get bad vibes. So, in my dream, I went to their <laughs> house. And even though, like, I knew the people, I got really bad vibes. And I was like, something's wrong. And turns out the father was a murderer. And that's why I had bad vibes. So, maybe <laughs> in my dreams, paranormal activity does exist. But never in my real life, personally. There we go. That's the explanation. Okay. No, but like... That didn't make any sense. You know what? It's fine. I haven't experienced it in a dream, but in real life, I would like... Like, even in my house, there's like some locations in my house that I'm just like, this is a Mm -hmm. little bit creepier than other places. Or even like, if I go to someone's house... Yeah. Maybe it's just, like, the feeling that it's mysterious or that it's so unfamiliar that I get, like, a little bit creeped out by some houses. Not your house. Your yeah, house that cool. could be it. Like, oh, it's just well, letting you know. Your house is cool. Don't worry about it. My entire house, yeah. <laughs> You've never been in the attic, have you? Just kidding. No. I Neither have I. You know, the attic is, like, one of the creepiest places in a house. The only time I've been in the attic was just to, like, take suitcases out mm-hmm. in the summertime. And I will never go back there again because it's so hot. 
But that has nothing to do with paranormal activity. Maybe it does, though. What if there were, like, ghosts and they were, like, having a sauna in there? <laughs> I don't know. Because now I feel stupid because you believe in ghosts and I don't. And I'm like, no, what no. if they're actually real? And I'm just being dumb and they're just, like, wow, that's so rude. You don't believe in us. experiences about it. Okay. So if you don't believe in ghosts, do you believe in, mm. like, demons? Or, like, you know, like, in those movies where they have the possessions and stuff like that, do you believe in those? Not really. No. I think, okay, well, like, in my head, I don't believe it, right? But then in real life, I also sort yeah, of don't that's believe the... it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you said I don't believe it in both. So like, weird pauses. I'm so oh. sorry. Go ahead. No, you were like, in my head, logically, I don't believe it. But in real life, I also don't believe it. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the opposite in real life. Because I was going to say, that's kind of how I feel about, like, magic. But in my head, like, magic is kind of encompasses all of the stuff, you know, that we mm-hmm. talk about. Like, logically, I don't. Like, in my head, I think yeah. I'm like, yeah, I know that's not real. But, like, in my heart, you know? In my heart. Kind of I'm spiritual. Like, maybe, <laughs> maybe it's I'm real, like, yeah. you know? Like, I just want it to be real so bad that I kind of believe it's real. I don't think I want demons to be real, but magic, yes. I want, like, something that made no sense. But you know what I mean? Like, something other than, like, boring science. Mm-hmm. Not that science is boring. No offense to anybody who's listening who likes science. I think science is cool. But just something other than what we like, can explain. So, <laughs> like, so that would just be cool. I bring up- the reason I'm asking about this demon thing, if you believe in demons, is because mm-hmm. although truly I don't think I believe it as much, like I don't think, because usually like uh, if someone's possessed, right, and they're acting abnormal, like because of this, they're anti like God or anti like church or whatever, you know? <gasps> I was literally going to mention that. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. So that's like so weird to me because anyone, could feel that way and it doesn't have to be like a demon possessing you that you hate like the cross or you hate holy water you know yeah i was kind of gonna i was kind of gonna mention something like that because i think that when people talk about demons that kind of stuff like i associate that with like religion right and i'm personally not like a very religious person so maybe Mm -hmm. that is part of it maybe that's part of why i don't like I'm not that likely to believe in like that kind of stuff because it's kind of like associated with the religion to me. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I just like kind of lump all of that stuff together because I'm not like, I don't feel that strongly about one thing. I like automatically don't feel that strongly about the other thing. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. yeah. So like in my head, because religion's more of like, to me, is a social construct and it's not of, mm-hmm. you don't know if it's actually fact, right? Like science. It's not defined this is just my yeah. opinion so no one get triggered by this but um so to me it's not it's not factual and then so when I hear of like demons I'm like are you sure maybe it's just like people who believe so strongly about their religion and they, they believe in it so much that if they see someone that doesn't like their religion or who opposes it they automatically assume oh they're possessed by demons that's why they're like reacting so strongly yeah, I kind of feel the same way because, yeah, like, my mindset towards religion is, is similar to, like, it's something that, you know, like, we learn about in history class, like, ancient civilizations have their religion, and the reason they made it up is, like, to explain the world around them, mm-hmm. like, on, a, on, like, an anthropology-ish type of, like, perspective. Yeah. But, um, and, like, I don't, like, 100% believe in, like, oh, this is real, this is real. Like, mm-hmm. but yeah, I, yeah, I guess there's like a difference between actually believing it's real and like maybe like wanting it to be real, which is where I fall, I guess. Mm-hmm. And by it, I don't mean like religion or like even something. I just mean like like something other. Mm-hmm. Also, like that's like a uh, in terms of demons, right? I I was um watching a YouTuber and she was basically saying the story about a real demon possession and sort of what is it called when they. They, like, cleanse you of the demon. Exorcism? Oh, yeah. So she was talking about an exorcism that happened, and it's one of the most famous exorcisms out there. And Mm -hmm. when she was talking about it, I was like, 
it sounds like because they have like extensive journals and extensive books and stuff about this one instance I'm like then is it real because of this one time that it actually happened yeah yeah I I was just I just brought up demons because I was really interested in it and I was like that's interesting wait I was gonna like say something in response to that what was it oh yeah like okay not to get like political but you know how some people like use religion as a way to just get what they want whether like not everybody uses religion in the way that it should be used so so? some people use it as like a means to gain power or Uh, like mm -hmm. uh, you know yeah basically that like as a way to gain power or wealth or whatever and there are people like that so yeah like here like reading instances like those um like people like that um or reading about them like you know throughout history there have been people like that so when I read stuff like that that kind of makes me less inclined to believe that stuff like this is real because in the past there have been many people who try to convince the public that oh demons are real or like this thing is real or like Mm. this otherworldly power is real just to gain power for themselves or like exploit other people so yeah I guess uh the Salem witch trials right where they believe that people were <clears throat> witches and then they sought to get yeah them. and and you know like the um what was it like the catholic church in the whatever you know martin luther and he made like the 95 theses thing mm. because the catholic church was like basically exploiting or like taking advantage of the fact that uh, what was that called read <gasps> I know you're talking about but yes yes I know what you're talking about I don't know what it's oh called, um but yeah Lutheranism no Protestantism something oh, wasn't I it Why did I okay maybe this? I don't know is it when they were collecting money from the people because of yeah money? yeah yeah they were they were like well, I don't know the term right? the term to to like repent their sins so they can go into heaven yeah 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 exactly that was it yeah. but yeah so like and that hasn't and it's not only like Catholicism it's like almost every religion ever historically mm-hmm. has had many figures who have done something like that or even like it has been like a collective effort you know so yeah I guess that kind of like that is part of why maybe I'm not as much of a believer in you know paranormal Mm -hmm. magic like anything because people have used that as a means to you know do something for themselves like instead of actually like it being a real thing (laughs) so in this case of the exorcism like taking it from your (laughs) perspective Mm-hmm. if i take a look at the exorcism like like one side of me sort of believes that it's real that this girl was so um demonic and caught up in uh like a demon was possessing her because in this story i'll give you like a short vague rundown because i don't know mm-hmm. enough about it so there's this girl i don't remember which year this was in but it was a girl who was like a devout um i think christian but she like attended church she was like a really like really religious right so she attends church oh, i don't even know i don't even know if i could give a good general description of this because i'm really bad at saying stories and stuff it's okay, okay. <laughs> so she's she's really into her religion and i'm gonna assume that it's probably like some sort of like christian catholic something like that and unfortunately at some point she goes to church and she like becomes sort of like demonic where she like yells at people where she has like seizures and things like that when she goes into like a church or Mm -hmm. if people like give her blessed objects so like if if like a priest blesses a a, like a pen or like blesses like a cross or something uh, she comes into contact with it she like automatically knows that it's blessed even if no one tells her and she's like get that away from me so Oh. things like that and then so like uh for weeks and weeks um they would try to like exercise her from like this demon that was in her because she, she was so reactive to anything that's related to religion and then after after the exorcism she was completely fine and obviously this is like not the full story and i feel like if you listen to the mm-hmm. fourth the if you listen to the full story it it goes into more detail and it does a better job of describing how terrible her symptoms were and yeah I like when I listened to it I was like oh this is actually this sounds like it's probably real but then a part of me is also thinking like obviously religion's not the same thing as like a cult but when you see like in cults or people like the leaders would like show their healing powers or do these things to demonstrate for their people to say this is the true power of believing in us right I'm sort of wondering yeah 
is it real or is it just a ploy to get followers and for them to believe that as long as you believe yeah. in, in this then you're going to be okay that's really interesting because I don't know if I say this because I'm pessimistic or because I'm trying to be like practical or unbiased or something mm-hmm. but yeah there is more than one way to look at it like if that's true then that's really interesting because that's a lot of coincidences so maybe it's more than just a Mm -hmm. coincidence but at the same time yeah like that's the thing because like I feel like a lot of instances like these especially like stuff that we learn in history and stuff like that turns out that they're just like a political move or something like that yeah I don't know it's interesting I think personally I mean yeah obviously I didn't hear the whole story like the thing that you watched or you um, heard but I feel like I would I'm just more skeptical about these things personally. Mm -hmm. Maybe for me, I would probably need like cold hard proof to truly believe something like Mm -hmm. this, not to like undermine religion or anything. Um, Yeah, that's just my perspective, I guess. I'd probably be more skeptical. Because these are all secondhand accounts, you can't really be sure of the validity of it. Yeah, that and um, just knowing that in the past, these kind of things have been used as like a ploy or whatever. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess that's what does make me skeptical. I like how we just went, like, do you believe in magic to <laughs> religion <laughs> magic and politics? To, like, demons, <laughs> possessions, exorcism. Yeah, all those I love it. Okay, so I think that on the matter of believing in paranormal activity or magic, I personally, for one, I think, like, I kind of group them all together in one category. Mm-hmm. And also, I fall between the line of not believing it practically, but also really wanting to believe it, just to know that there's something else out there <laughs> or whatever. So that's my. And also, I think when I read about stuff like this, especially like historical accounts, I also think of how politics and and other factors come into play. So yeah, for the most part, I'm a little bit more skeptical, but also I really wish that I was a very precise. I also fall under the line of I sometimes like wish it was real in terms of magic. I wish I had magic powers. I wish I could be yes. an airbender or something, you know? Like, oh give, my God, me, yeah. give me some magic, okay? I want to be the next avatar. Like, come on. Or like even time travel. I, I wish I could time right? travel. That would, I would count that as magic. Yeah. So I wish it was real, but unfortunately, reality grinds. Right. Reality. (laughs) Reality grounds us in reality, and I have a lot of debt and no magic can pay that off. (laughs) No magic can pay that off. So yeah, ghost. I'm still somewhat of a believer just because my personal experiences, like footsteps. That's one thing creepy vibes from houses that's one thing but I felt like I yeah. truly interacted with some spirits when I was younger you know so yeah that's just wait wait my opinion. I have an additional thought though what's up okay so imagine sometime in the future scientists somehow develop like time travel or like figure it out that or somehow we find out that aliens exist and like there's like other life out there mm-hmm. would you consider that magic Mm. or would you like does that give you the same vibe i guess as like magic or like Mm. other worldly things do you know like back to the future Mm -hmm. so like in that case like if it was that type of time travel where you i think that's more grounded in science than magic because magic sort of the unexplainable things right and then if you had time travel that scientists came up with that's more like science because they found how all the pieces fit together and that's how they could get time mm-hmm. travel. I also feel like if that happened, I would kind of get the same vibes as magic just because I'd be like, oh, you know, like that's something that's impossible, but now it's real. That's like light used to not be possible and now we have light bulbs. Some people might say that's magic. Some people might say calling people on yeah. your phone is magic, but in reality, it's just science. Just maybe technology. maybe magic is just science you know when you like learn about a subject that's like you're really interested in and you're like in mm-hmm. awe basically yeah. like I still kind of get the same vibes as like you know because okay so like when I took like linguistics and we were learning the very beginning of it 
Mm-hmm. And my professor was saying, like, you know, humans, like, developed this. Or, like, not developed this, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, it's such a complex thing. And it's just, um, or, like, language is such a complex thing. And it, every single human is born with the ability to, like, like, we just know. Mm-hmm. Like, that's not magic explicitly, like, as in fairies and wands, but I don't know. It just kind of gives you the same vibes, like, whoa. It's so complex, like, how can you even explain it? Like, there's so many things you can even explain about a lot of topics. Mm -hmm. And if we're going off the idea that magic is things that are unexplainable, then there's so many things in, like, astronomy and, like, biology and, like, all these subjects that we still can't explain. I just searched up the definition of magic and Mm -hmm. it's the power of apparently influencing the course of events by using mysterious or supernatural forces yeah see if we go off this mysterious one mystery is like you just don't know right yeah and there's so many things that we don't know like what's at the bottom of the ocean and like how big is the universe and like Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff so in a way that's like kind of magic too you should Mm -hmm. write a book that was really inspirational so are we gonna leave it off here yeah let's do it well, I hope everybody had fun listening to us talk about, I don't even know what, um, I literally don't even know what we just talked about. We started off somewhere, <laughs> we ended up here, hope it was entertaining, you know what? at least. That's magical. So, that, that conclusion is, is, is magic, yes. It really is. And also, in conclusion, you have to read Magic Treehouse and Rainbow Magic um, immediately, or otherwise there will be no oh. next podcast. Is there, like, a online PDF that I can find? I'm going to find it, like, literally as soon as we end the call. I'm going to send it to you. So you, I don't have to, right? That's for you to decide. How important is my friendship to you? Um, if, you were, if you read Rainbow Magic, you would know the importance of friendship. So. I, I watched My Little Pony. Friendship is magic. No. Yeah. That doesn't even compare to Rainbow Magic. It doesn't magic. compare? But I thought it was, It like, doesn't. Okay. Don't talk about things you don't know, to me. <laughs> okay, so we're going to leave it on here. Yeah, anyway. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. Anyway. Oh. Well. Okay, well, I guess we'll hear from here. us next time. Um, or not, if we're no longer friends by then. But thank um, you. For well, you'll, you'll find out in the next episode. <laughs> I hope I can edit this. Just me talking. So... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, bye. Bye.